I'm happy to get you into the podcast world because they are awesome. Honestly, you'll love them when you, once you get into them. I'm sure. I'm sure. Looking forward to it. Hi, I'm Hiba Shunbo and welcome to Mommy's Happy Hour, a show about all things motherhood related. I didn't expect it, but motherhood was and is the most challenging thing I've done to date. After a long struggle with infertility, I had my twins at the age of 41. Three years later, here we are, and I'm curious to figure out what advice and theories have worked for mothers, catch up with them, and occasionally vent about the things we have to deal with daily. And hey, if you're enjoying the show, give us a rating and review to let me know what you most enjoyed from this episode. You can directly connect with me on Instagram at Mommy's Happy Hour. Also, make sure to share this with someone who you think would like or relate to the podcast. Today, I'm joined by Rania Sidi. She's a mother of three, a health coach now, a recipe chef, and a fitness enthusiast turned triathlete. I actually hadn't seen Rania in almost five years. In fact, when I last saw her, she was still pregnant with her third child. Since then, a lot has gone on. She's gotten divorced, reinvented herself a couple of different ways, and remarried to the same guy, by the way. So we had a lot to catch up on. One relevant aspect she talks about in great detail, something that people in this part of the world are generally very hush-hush about, and that is the fact that her and her husband go to couples therapy. You're probably thinking that it would be easier the second time around, right? But it makes you realize that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And no matter how well you know someone, marriage isn't easy. But communication is important and we have to keep working on it to get it right. I think we can all agree that we need some work in that department. I remember when I saw you last time, you were pregnant with your third child. How, how long ago is that now? Five years? Four. She'll be five in, uh, on Halloween, actually. Wow. Oh my God. I thought it was just two years. You're, I didn't, I I forgot that I was pregnant. You were pregnant. I remember. And, um, and I wasn't obviously there yet. Uh, but yeah, (laughs) cause mine are, mine just turned three this year. Oh, so yeah. So it'll be five years in, uh. Yeah. Because it was in the summertime. I remember it was really hot and we were doing the iced teas. Yes, exactly. So you're right. So, so you, at years. that time, you were working for Tavalon. Tavalon, yeah. I partnered the up tea with company. the tea company. Yeah. And uh, you came to see me at the Four Fat Ladies to do some drinks. And we did some cool beverages with uh, some iced uh, tea beverages and things like that. And, and okay, let me just give you a little bit of background. So you are, you did live in the States for a while, right? All my life, actually. 29 years. Okay. And so you got here at the age of 29. Yes. Exactly. You met your husband and you married him. Yeah, I met him there too. You went in the States. Yeah. Okay, okay. So he, he brought me here. Okay, great. But you're originally Egyptian. I'm originally Egyptian, but um, I had only been to Egypt maybe about three times before that. Three, four times. Not much. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So you came and you guys got married and then you had kids right away, right? Right away. I got pregnant with my first child. That is after like two months, uh, which I was not planning on doing that at all. I wanted to wait. Uh, and then the second one, uh, Zena, uh, that was just like, you know, I'm already fucked up in the head and tired. <laughs> and you know what I mean? If I'm going to do this again, I want to do it right now. You know, yeah. just, I want to be really tired and just give me some extra work to do and get it over with, which I totally against now. But, um, so yeah, I had those two back to back literally. So, but cause you weren't working at the time, right? When, when I moved here, um, I got a job teaching. I hated it. I really hated it. I just jumped around from different schools. Um, my longest stay was at Choi Fet, um, and I couldn't deal with it. It was just, I was being so impatient with my kids when I got home because I was dealing with another 30 kids the whole day and it was first grade. Oh God. Oh my God. They were monsters. Monsters. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine having kids and wanting to actually come home to your own kids. I know. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, yeah, it was really tough. I did that for like maybe my first two years of being in Cairo. Um, and I was just like, screw it. Uh-uh. No, it no. still wasn't good enough. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's tough. You money have to have a buy personality to be a teacher, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so that wasn't for me. And then I stayed home, actually. Um, and then I uh, actually opened up, I don't know if I ever told you that, I opened up a little burger joint, hot dog joint called Uncle Sam's in Maedi. 
next to oh, Drinkies, you know, no on, way. on road nine. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Right. Stuck right next to it. How did that do? It did good actually, but I had, uh, I had absolutely no kind of experience. I had nobody to advise me. Uh, it was just, you know, just really just whatever, yeah. you know, I wasn't even measuring any of the recipes. It was like, oh. <laughs> The kitchen was in my, the kitchen, our main kitchen was my kitchen. It was in the building. I lived in the building. Okay. So I was preparing everything, making everything. And the place was literally three meters to a meter and a half. Wow. It was tiny. It, very, very small. It was just pretty much we heat and we serve and you, you take it, you know, you take it away. You know, I had a little bar area where people could sit if they wanted. Um, but majority of it came from like a lot of people from drinkies. It was, order some beers like hey can you go get two hot dogs next door so the drinkies guy would make us business so it was nice oh wow but it was just too hectic for me how long did that last for almost a year and how old were your kids at the time uh, his was two in a few months and giselle was a newborn actually i mean Zena was a newborn wow. she was just a few months old you know how did how did you and you were <laughs> handling everything with this hot dog place? everything I did have, but I guess a being in the same building was made it easier a little bit. Definitely, right? and I like I love to cook. Um, I always always enjoyed that um, at that you know growing up at the diners in, in the states. I love those diners. You know, I love when they cook it. I know what you mean. I, I love that. You know, all that greasy butter and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. like, oh, I love that. So that uh, concept, I, I love. I always remember Wendy's and Denny's. Like I used to yes, love those places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I know I, I couldn't do that at that point. Um, and then it was just, it just came up really random. Like it wasn't something I planned for. It was, this place was actually, uh, sold light bulbs and the guy wanted to, it was his place and he wasn't making any business. It was a really small place. So I was like, what can I do with this space? I'm going to sell hot dogs. There's no hot dogs. Yeah. There was absolutely no hot dogs in Cairo yet. There was no burger place except for like McDonald's and stuff. Like this was what year? 2011 2000 okay. yeah 2011 oh just before the revolution it was right after the revolution because okay. giselle yeah, yeah. zina was born on the 18th of feb so it was okay. right after the revolution like a few months later okay um so there wasn't really anything going on in egypt yet so i wanted to introduce the, the hot dog um but i don't regret it it was really it was really fun um i loved it i would definitely it, it's in the back of my mind i do want to open up my a, another place um, but it would be a whole different concept because I'm all into uh, health and stuff now. So, um, yeah, well, see, that's the thing because since <laughs> we, since we last saw each other, okay. So you were selling the teas right. that were really nice. Then I saw you because I only, cause I hadn't seen you. We had lost touch completely. And so I was following you on Instagram. And then I saw like this whole kind of new you that popped up where you were like doing a lot of working out, you were doing workouts and you were like competing and things like that. And then I remember you kind of, there was, you had an issue in, in your marriage and that was kind of on the rocks. And then after you popped up again and you were doing food and cooking just recently. So I was like, oh my God, she's like super mom. So tell me. <laughs> it's really weird how it worked out. When I was pregnant with Giselle after I left you, at that time of my life, um, Tavlon was kind of interesting because it, it opened my eyes on how healthy a lot of everything that we eat and drink is and the teas like i always used to drink regular tea i had no idea it had any kind of health benefits so reading and learning about the teas helped me and enjoy um learning more about food so that's where i started off then i had giselle in october and she had, she was so colicky she was just crying all the time i didn't understand what was going on even though she was my third child um, I was breastfeeding uh, like the other two, but no matter what I did, she just kept on screaming and yelling. So I started experimenting in food. So I thought, well, what if I remove uh, my coffee? But I need my coffee. So let's experience on, experience on different kinds of coffees. So I would do like Nescafe. She would go crazy afterwards. Then I would do a nice uh, brand of espresso and she wouldn't cry after that. And then I would experiment, experiment with milks. What if I remove my milk? What if I add my milk? What if I eat gluten? What if I don't eat gluten? Um, and then I realized that that was actually making her much better. If I ate better quality food, uh, she was less cranky. 
She was less colicky when you breastfed yeah, her. Yeah, when, when I would breastfed her from the food. So it was the food that I was eating that was making her this way. Um, then I decided I was sitting home at that time. I wasn't doing anything. Let me look more into nutrition. So I went ahead and took a nutrition course. Uh, and that's how I started my journey with my working out because I was already working out. Okay. I was working out before Giselle, um, but then I stopped when I was pregnant. I didn't do much. Uh, and then work right when I gave birth, like after I think uh, 40 days, I was literally back uh, at working out. At that time, I was only doing BeFit as well. Okay. Which um, is BeFit is? Uh, it's like uh, cross training, you know, okay. a lot of strengthening and uh, just it's it's a mix of uh, different things like CrossFit. Okay. Um, so I, I took my course. I finished that, uh, enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, I started eating really healthy. I was like really strict. Like I removed all the gluten, all sugar, all, all dairy, even though I love all, all of the above, you know, I was like your big, biggest fan. I know. <laughs> Four fat ladies is like my life. When you open up my head, so I'm like, yay. Yeah. With all the frosting. Yeah, that's he, all dairy. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but I completely removed all of that out of my diet and because I believed it, but only be, but also because I like to experiment. I want to try it out. Like I believe everything, I don't believe everything, but everything that I studied, I believe until I experiment on my own. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you saw the results were positive and they, you benefited from them. So therefore you kind of like, that was like for you, that was the exactly. the conclusion like, that that was a good thing for you. Exactly. Do. But okay, so I'm just, I was just going to ask you about your, your third daughter. So Giselle, so you, you said it was more, it was, wasn't easier the third time round. It was easier. What was it? What's the age difference? It's quite a big age in seven years. No, my son, um, He's 12 now. He'll be 13 when she's five. So there's an eight year difference. Yeah. And uh, Zena, six years. Okay. And it is easier because you just don't give a shit as much as you used to. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? You know, it's like I was so anal with my son. Like, I think I was at my worst with him where you're just so picky. I, I can even see his insecurities that those are things I built in him. You know oh, what I mean? God. I made him that way. That was so me. So you think it was your insecurities that kind of yeah just you... my insecurities beliefs just being unirrational and you know I need this done needs to be done this way when it really doesn't need to be done that way yeah you yeah, know what yeah. I mean and you know and just making sure of everything like I said you know my insecurities in men you know just so worried to for him to turn out that way so just pushing it so much when that's exactly what you're gonna get if you keep on pushing it you know yeah. So, and just not letting him be, you know, he really, I, I didn't let him be who uh, he should be. You know, we're all different, you know, and we're just, whatever society makes us think we need our kids to be, he needs to be talking at this age. He needs to be potty trained at this age. Come on. Oh no my God. I'm glad, I'm glad that you bring that up because for me, that was like one of the things, my daughter's much slower than my son. Okay. And I was like why is she she and i everybody comes on telling me you should check with a specialist you should do this and you should check her hearing maybe she can't hear so i was getting a little parent i wasn't that paranoid but because he was a little more advanced than her so i said maybe something's maybe something's wrong with her and so i checked her hearing her hearing's fine then i ch took her to a specialist but when i saw her a few times at the specialist the woman's like yeah she needs the discipline I was like, the discipline, I can do that. It doesn't, but she seems to be fine. She seems to be interacting fine. She has her own way, I realize. They're very different personalities. She has her own, she thinks in her own world and she kind of is cocooned in her own, you know, yeah. Yeah. what she creates in her mind. So I thought to myself, is that wrong? But I have it like, because growing up, I felt like I was always, my parents were always trying to make me something I wasn't. So for me, I'm very conscious about not doing that with my own kids because I feel like that was the biggest thing for me that I had a hard, a hard time with. But I know what you mean. You kind of, your insecurities, you kind of, you know, you pass them on to your kids. So that's why it's very important to kind of, which is great that you kind of realize that. And did you realize that after you had your third? My third. That's when that you was realized. Like my my awakening. That's when I got divorced. I'm like, screw this. Yeah, I'm you got divorced. divorced. How long after you got had your third did I, you get divorced? Three months. 
but it, that must have been tough because for me it's like I'm like now like even before I used to think like before we had kids I'd be like he's so annoying I want to get a divorce now like with the kids I'm like he's so annoying but I don't give a shit I need somebody to help me out <laughs> yeah I just went on this like screw the world just like you know what I mean with with my family as well where you know, if you can't accept me the way I am, this is who I am, this is what I want. I've been hibernating for this long. And I was just like... But you know, I felt it in your Instagram account. I really? felt like you bloomed, like you got, came I out. Really it's like, that. yeah, it's true. It's like, I felt like, I, I knew that the, you were like pretty special person, really a uh, very nice person, very interesting. But then when I saw it on, on Instagram, I was like, yeah, she kind of did a 180. It's like, you kind of like, you're like, it, it felt like that. Like when you're yeah. saying that, it's like, like, fuck it, I'm going to be me. Yes. This is exactly what happened. Exactly. So I want to say it got easier with Giselle because I just let her be. She's just her own personality. And I'm, I love it. You know, uh, my daughter, uh, the middle one, um, I can see her changing as I develop and become a more happier me. She is such a more happier her. Oh, but that's great, though. So then you're saying, so even if you screw up your children at the beginning, there's always hope for it. Yes. It's like your growth will transfer and transfer onto them as well. Like your insecurities, the negative will be, will, will transfer onto them, but also the positive, which you is great. You can always change that. Yeah, yeah. You can always work on that. You know what I mean? It's why? Why not? Yeah. You know, look, at, look at me. You said you met me like four or five years ago and you said like I blossomed just like this. Yeah, it's true. And it's, it's never too late. So it, it's never too late. And we... You know, these these kids, they're they're so resilient as well. You know what I mean? So as mothers, I think we put too much blame on ourselves, too much on, you know, like responsibility. You know, their kids are our responsibility, but we also don't own them. So we shouldn't be so worried about what they're going to turn out. You know, and we can teach them val our values. We can teach them, you know, other things in life, but it's their decision at the end of the day. You know, and we should accept them for whatever decisions they make. So if they are smarter, if they are slower, if they are funnier, if they are a little bit more, you know, playful, you know, whatever it is, you know what I mean? We, I, I think we should, can be there to guide them, but I don't think we should, you know, turn them into something that they don't want to turn into. So I think that's mo probably my biggest thing that I focus on now. And how about your husband? So, or your ex-husband? No, we got remarried. Oh, that's right, that's right. You guys got remarried. Yeah, that yes. was crazy. Okay, so how did that happen? <laughs> so you got divorced. You're like, fuck it. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna get divorced and do my own thing. Yeah. And then when did you get remarried? I got remarried a year after that. To, I have to point out. I don't know if it was clear. She, you got married to your ex-husband. My ex-husband, which does your, not happen. <laughs> yeah, which is yeah. Everybody's like. We got remarried to the same guy twice. Yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't sound so good, but yeah. <laughs> Must be meant to be. So tell me, so what happened after that? Um, that year was actually great for me. I, it was one of my best years of my life, actually. You know, I, I got to do a lot of soul searching and, and uh, you know, understanding who I am and things that I like and things that I don't like and just being okay with, with change, you know? Like, I was always the kind of person, well, if I don't like that, that means I don't like it. Actually, it doesn't. I can like it today if I want to like it today, you know? So I, I started doing that and I started working out uh, a lot. Uh, and then I started exploring actually the triathlon field uh, because strengthening and stuff was like, okay, what's the end of this? You know what I mean? I want to see what else I can do. So I started, I learned how to swim. Um, and then I started learning how to cycle and then running. Um, and throughout that whole time, actually, my ex-husband didn't leave me alone. He kept, he stayed behind me. Like, he was just like... Pursuing you, huh? And just working on himself. Okay. You know, we're completely different. Completely. So he just started working on, ex on himself and exploring more. And he's not outgoing at all. But then he was just like, he started traveling. He's never traveled alone before. So he traveled alone. Um, and he was just there for me. Um, so I decided, I mean, after that one year, uh, like, why not? You know what I mean? It's, it's not him that made me unhappy, all those, because we were married for uh, 11 years at that point. So it wasn't him that made me unhappy. It was actually me. You yeah. know, I'm the one that 
put myself, because I was depressed for the first seven, eight years in here in Cairo. I was really depressed. I was not happy. Um, and I blamed everybody. I blamed the country and I blamed everybody around me. You know, I definitely did not look at myself. So once I started, that mindset changed and I realized like, I don't even want to leave Egypt now. And I'm like, I don't, I went to States once that's that when I got divorced for one month on my own. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to live here. You know, I want to be back in Egypt. So, um, after he kept on trying to pursue to get, get remarried with me, I just thought, why not? You know, if I'm going to give anybody a, a try, you know, he is a good guy. You know, we did not divorce because there's, you know, there, there's any problem with me or with, with him. We just, we have our, we're issues of communication. Which is in every marriage. Yes, in actually. every marriage. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought, why not give it a try? You know, you guys had both changed at that point, probably. So yeah. you probably thought this would be a better. Exactly. So we got remarried again. It was really spontaneous too, like everything else in my life. Um, like nobody knew about it. Like I just picked up the phone of my parents. I'm like, we're getting married. Like, what? And like even my friends, my friends knew after I got remarried. They were like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, I, so we did get remarried. We're married right now. It's not any easier. We do have better, we do have better communication skills. We are going through marriage counseling and stuff like that. Still? So you guys have been together for three years now again? Or two years. Two years. This will be the third year, yeah. So what are the issues now? Are they different? Have they changed? Um, no, they're still there. They're still the same issues. But we handle it much better. Mm -hmm. um, which one of them is we communicate much better now. It, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Like we're two different people where now I believe in the yin and the yang. I do believe that opposites attract. When three years ago, when we got divorced, I believe, no, we're opposite. We're completely opposite and we do not attract. So now I do believe that opposites attract, but there has to be um, the right kind of opposites. There has to be, it has to fit. Yeah, it has to be like a puzzle. Yes. Piece. Just because you have any puzzle pieces doesn't mean they're all going to fit. Yeah. So you need the yin and the yang, but it needs to fit. So I think this is what me and his issues are. But I mean, we are working on them. We're, I, I don't know where we're going to go. But do you think because you have kids together, that makes you more drawn to him? Yeah. I mean, ho, ho, he's, you know, I, I, I love him dearly. Like he's somebody like uh, my mind, my, my, the way I see divorce or anything is completely different than most people. Like I, I want to take care of him until he goes or I go, you know, he's the, the father of my kids. You know what I mean? I need, it's my best interest that he's at his best for these kids. And I hope it's vice versa. So I just, I, I think I'm just, we're just waiting around to see like what, what happens. You know what I mean? We both wish, wish each other the best. You know what I mean? He's a great guy. I, you know, I believe I'm a, I'm a good person. Um, so we're just, we go to marriage counseling actually on a weekly basis. It's very, very draining. Um, but it does a lot of good. I mean, I, even if we end up uh, not together, we are definitely, she, they, the counseling made us much better together. Yeah. And he, I can see him when he talks now. I can, I can actually understand him than seeing all the blah that usually I, I accuse him for or the negative emotions that I feel. So. So, it, which is much better, which is great, but I don't know where it's going to go. We'll see. What do you think about the counseling here? Because I think people here don't believe in this whole counseling thing, especially men. Like I think at one point me and my husband had major issues and so we decided to go to counseling, but, but if two people don't believe in it, I mean, I remember him just sitting there being like, yeah, what the hell am I doing here? And why the fuck have you like brought me here? You know, like kind of looking at me like he was pissed off. But I think generally people here don't believe in that whole marriage counseling. They're like, if it doesn't they work, don't. it doesn't work. Is it, how do your, how does your family, both of your families and like friends think of that? Or do they not know? Um, well, I'm a very quiet person with my business, usually with my parents. Like they're completely different. They're so conservative. Okay. Very, very, very conservative. They don't live here? They live in, they live in my ID. Okay, so they live here. Yeah, yeah. And they're very, very close-minded. Extremely. Okay. You know, my parents got married young. My father came from a very religious family. Um, so it's useless. I don't even get them involved. Okay. Sometimes on, on anything, you know. I think my mom just asked me, like, 
a few months ago, like, where do you work again? <laughs> I'm just like, wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, his side is family I'm not close with at all. Okay. Which is one of our other issues. You know, we're close, but we're not close. You know, it's yeah. just like high by. Uh, uh, just the formalities. Exactly. Um, my friends, uh, a few of my friends, they know we go to marriage counseling. Um, but I usually don't let anybody, um, anybody's opinion really. Like I'll pick like one person that I'll talk to um, that I trust completely. Uh, and I'll ask their advice or I'll go to them. And literally, that's it. Um, but in Egypt, no, they do not believe in marriage counseling. It is very difficult. It is very difficult to find somebody, somebody's, uh, I want to say what their, their techniques. I would think that it's not easy to find even a counselor who does good marriage counseling or who is going to be maybe objective and is also going to help you guys come out better on the other side. Yeah. And it's the men, it's the men that have a big issue with that. Um, it, it's the mentality. It's just where they were grown up, where, why, why would I talk to some stranger about my business? You yeah. know, why am I going to tell them my insecurities? You know what I mean? It's also an, it, it's an ego thing, Bordeaux, if you think yeah. about it, you know, which is one of the biggest reasons why I got remarried to Tamer. Because, um, you could see that all the other men were so fucked up. open. <laughs> he's so open to change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though it's so difficult for him to accept me, as I am, which, which was one of my issues where it's like, you know, I already had that issue with my parents. You know, I'm not going to marry somebody else to tell me who I need to be or what do I need to do. You know, I am who I am. And if you can't accept that, then I'm sorry. Um, but he stayed behind me that year, which showed me like, wow, you know what I mean? You're still here and you're still willing because he wasn't willing to do the marriage counseling before we got divorced the first time. Yeah, I'm sure. So then he was like, OK, let's do it. We didn't do it right away. I stayed behind him for like a year. Yeah. Of our marriage, we weren't, it wasn't good at all. And then we started going to counseling, which is good. And I, and I think we've been doing it for like four months now, four or five months now. So, and consistent on a weekly basis. So I think unless somebody actually keeps on trying and actually finds a good counselor, then they're not going to see any results. So they're just thinking we're going and when we leave, we fight. So she's causing more hell or he's causing more hell. So why should we continue going? Which is understandable. Like this happened to me in Tamer. Like you're not supposed to like after marriage counseling, you're not supposed to talk about anything that happens in that room. Once you both leave, you close the door, you don't bring it up. Okay. This did not happen the first few times. So my week was usually hell. Yeah. And I wish I would dig a big hole in the ground and just Yes, it was just you guys arguing more about that. Exactly. Which is why a lot of people are against marriage counseling, because this leads them into divorce. Yeah. So they actually end up getting divorced. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's not good because you can definitely try harder, you know, and keep on going. And now we learn to shut our mouths. Like I'll even put them on the spot now when she'll be like, okay, you guys close your mouths. I'm like, well, tell him last week he started talking about it and he's like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, literally I do it this way now. I'm like, just shut up. We're not talking about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I, I have a good marriage counselor that I go to. Uh, if anybody needs advice, uh, yeah. or, uh, if, uh, advice of who to go to, I don't mind this, you know. Yeah, we'll re- put it in the show notes. We'll, yes, we'll mention yes, she, who it she's is. great. Um, she, she really is great. Um, we went to one before as well um, that he's great too. He's actually somebody very dear to me um, because he's the one that actually helped me out on finding myself. But we couldn't continue going to him because he ended up after we um at one point i started going to him alone and then he started going to him alone and then he can become biased yes so he cannot see us as a marriage counselor anymore yeah uh but he's lovely too so i can definitely recommend two people a man and a female that i personally uh went to and a lot of people have went to and uh, they've been happy with but why not i mean we all have our issues you know what i mean we we all have and, and it's it's a never-ending story you know we're we have for so sure. much to learn. But after after you guys got divorced, it stayed separated for that one year and you worked on yourself and you kind of became a much happier person, you said. And you said he worked on himself. So you guys are starting at a at a at a better you the the where you're starting at the second time round is better than than the first time round. Definitely. Right? And so the marriage counseling um 
what do you think has helped you with the most in that? And is it the communication? Is it better communication or is it more communication? Or like, do you no, know what I mean? We what weren't communicating at all. Okay. And it's not only communicating. A lot of us communicate, but are we actually comprehending what this person is saying? We're not. Are we actually realizing the signs that are coming or what this person is telling me right now? No, we're so absorbed in our phones and our lives and our work that we actually just ignore that person that's in the room with us, not intentionally. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, it's a big, it's a big problem. And then it's also a big part of it is baggage, uh, which is another hard thing that we're going through now is because we don't have one marriage. We have two marriages and our old one was never fixed. Like we never worked on anything. So all of that lingers. Yeah. Okay. You know? so, and that's a big, and that, and that's me right there. I think that's one of my biggest issues. Like I have just, I have all of that lying around, just lingering. And you haven't resolved that yet. Basically the first year, is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to resolve that. I'm trying to resolve that. We haven't even opened up those books. Okay. Can you imagine that? Yeah. We haven't even opened up like that. Just that alone scares me. Like, oh my God, if we haven't even opened up those books, how long are we going to be here? You know what I mean? Yeah. I stopped thinking that way. I just decided where I'm just going to trust the process that it, I'm doing everything I can and whatever happens at the end, it's going to happen for the best. Yeah. Because I do believe then, you know, that's the way it should be. Um, because it's so draining. Yeah, I can imagine. But also, I mean, you're, it's so, it must be so draining for you because you've got a million things you're doing. You're like, you're balancing work and working out and keeping healthy and fit and the kids. And for me, the kids are just like it's so draining. I have barely any energy to do anything. There are some weeks where I feel like, okay, yeah, I have this energy. I can socialize. I can, you know, do the mom thing and then I can do the work thing and I can go out at night. And then some, some weeks go by. I'm like, I cannot get out of like when I put them to bed at 7:30, 7 7 7 30 that's it I'm out like I'm brain dead I get a call I can't focus I can't think I don't want to do anything but just sit there mindlessly watching tv for an hour an hour and a half and then go to bed yeah yeah definitely so for you your kids are older so I would think that you know you, there's there's more now now I mean when people tell me it's more work when they get older it's not, I mean, I think they're much nicer now. I think it's much, much nicer, but it is more work in the sense that I can see that as they get older too, there's, there's school, there's, you know, emotions, there's issues, there's friends, there's all this kind of thing. So how do you handle it and how does he handle it? Um, well, since my son is 12 and my daughter is 10, so they're definitely have, they're, they're becoming their own little people now. You know, we have friends we want to see, um, which hasn't been that bad for me with my son because we move schools. They were going to Aziz and we went to Elston. So we moved a completely okay. different area too. So we're now we're in October. So he doesn't have the bunch of friends that he had before. So he's not as active, but he does have his sports. Um, and he had, does go to the club now. He met some people at the club. So going back and forth, doing that is is a headache with juggling uh, my my daughter's, because my, da my daughter is more sociable. So she socializes with everybody. So she already has a lot of friends. So dealing with that, and then that's not even the issue. The issue is you have two people that are in the same bracket. And then I have this four-year-old that's just, she's obsessed with my daughter, her, her older sister. You know, she's like, her, it's her life. It's like her mom. And she has her sports and she's just this little diva. She's like, I don't want to say she's spoiled. A lot of people are like, she's spoiled. But I mean, when I get angry, I yell sometimes. So... Why is it wrong when a four-year-old yells when she doesn't get what she wants? You know, she has, she has no idea how to express her feelings. Yeah, yeah. So she's either going to cry or she's going to yell. So I don't think she's spoiled. I just think, I just think that she's, uh, she just has a lot of emotions running around and she has a, a big personality. So it's definitely draining dealing with these three. But I, I'm not that kind of lady that can just sit at home. I need to be doing something like the cooking, like you brought up the reason why I started cooking because my nutrition has been doing really well. So, uh, for the past like four years now, um, so you, I'm in more terms of a health of, coach. In, oh, okay. So you, yeah, do, I okay. went over the nutrition part where I don't even believe in, I, I believe that counting calories does help you lose weight, but I don't believe that this is a lifestyle. 
I believe that there's so much more. So you do, you, you coach, you have clients and you, you're, you're a health, health coach. Yes. I'm a health coach. This is my passion, which is what, what do you do? I help them, um, have a better relationship with themselves, have a better relationship with their food to understand their bodies more, uh, to be more mindful, to, to understand what's going on up upstairs and to realize what their goals are and what they, what what they need to to do to achieve those goals and to be patient, learn patience. You know, everybody's like, I need three kilos, I need to lose them in three weeks. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, I know. Full stop. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm guilty of that. Yeah. So um, that's what I help them do. Like I, I only take clients that are willing to go on to that journey uh, because everybody is completely different. Uh, everybody's body is different. Uh, everybody's body reacts different to foods in a different way. So my idea of the nutrition completely changed what I learned where everything was on the book on like, this is bad. This is good. This is that. No, that's not true. You know what I mean? What is good for me? Not might not be good for you, you know? So I do that now. Uh, I've been doing that for the past four years and then I've been doing the triathlons racing and stuff like that. But then I got an injury in my legs. Um, and I couldn't work out anymore for the time being until I got recovered. Um, and something that I've been looking into for the past four years, um, was cooking, not for the love of cooking, because I got called into, um, a production company called me and they asked me if I would be interested into doing a cooking show. Um, so I went in there and I did the, you know, the interview and stuff like that. And I just was so uncomfortable doing what I do every day. I cook every day. I didn't yeah. understand why I was so comfortable. I was just so shy in front of the camera and whatnot. Um, so I didn't go through with it and I had like, I had to get like my own stylist and my own recipe developer and my own, oh, it was just like, whoa, this is really overwhelming. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it is (laughs) a lot of work, but it also made me think about maybe this is something I need to try. You know what I mean? Maybe I should look into that. Why not? And then they called me again and they told me, okay, why don't you be a guest on the cooking show? So I said, okay on Fed to Feet, and I did that, and I absolutely loved it. Okay, because it's easier spot- a little it bit. It is, the yeah. spotlight was on me, the <laughs> spotlight was on him, I was just in there joking around, coming and playing around and cooking okay, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But I loved it. Um, and then they called me back, they're like, do you want to do your own show again? So I was like, you know what? Let's do this, I'll, I'll do it this time. Uh, so we signed them up, My, I'll, I'll shoot in the summertime. Oh, so you have your own show now? Yes, <laughs> it's gonna be like, a mommy and uh, daughter or son or father kind of game show where we cook together and we see who oh, the winner wow, is. Wow, that's yeah, a yeah. lot of fun. You must yeah. be so excited. I am getting, I'm getting uh, anxiety starting oh, to come yeah, up. It's yeah. like another month or two. And where are the kids? What are the kids doing? How, how do you, what is your support system? Where, where do you get the help from? Uh, Tameda helps me out. My husband, he helps me out a lot. Uh, he, he was really supportive. Um, Honestly, my mother-in-law sends me her driver all the time for the kids when they need to go to sports because I'm the one usually taking them to the Navy and stuff. So they uh, send me the driver all the time. So I, I'm very blessed for that. Um, and that's it. I didn't even have a nanny. I just got a nanny or a maid last week, three days ago. Really? You so you never that? had a nanny all this time with the kids? No, ever since Corona. We, oh, okay, uh, okay. we let her go since then, and then we never had anybody. Okay, but well, before that you had? Off and on. Yeah, yeah, off and on. But uh, since Corona, yeah, we have been, what, like a year now? It's been a year? It's been so over a year anybody. Yeah. yeah. I just had, we're like, we're all at home. We all have hands and legs. Everybody's cleaning. So that was yeah. just my rule. Wow. Yeah. So the kids, Yanni, they're very mature. Yanni, I would leave, like, Aizu and Zina, would, they would babysit Giselle. They would be there. They would come home on their own. Everybody does their dishes. You know, food's already made. I make sure I cook before I leave the house in the morning. So it, it worked out right. Oh, all right. It was, it was, it was draining because they will be calling me a million times throughout the day or whatnot. So if they weren't at sports, then they were at home from what, like three until eight by themselves. Yeah. Uh, and it worked out all right. That's great. Yeah. yeah. We're all live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's killed each other. <laughs> Nobody killed each other. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll ask you one like last question. Like what is your biggest insecurity about motherhood? Oh my God, my biggest insecurity are just seeing that, you know, having one of my children just not do bad things, but be a bad person, you know, develop these bad 
traits which uh, I couldn't imagine ever uh, happening. So worried about them turning out to be like... Yeah, I just want them to be good people. Like yeah. I was just telling Timur that this morning. My daughter, she messaged me from somebody's phone in school this morning. I'm like, she said, Mama, can I go to my friend's house? I looked at him. I was like, you know what? She's such a good girl. She's such a sweetheart. You know, I'm so blessed. That's all I care about. Yeah. I think that's what I want for my kids. And I'm not yeah. going to worry about anything else. You know what I mean? They yeah. can do that. You know, they can figure out what they're going to do. You know, we all go to school for whatever reason. And, you know, you have doctors and dentists that are now whatever, free divers and like all of these people, all these engineers that just end up doing these random things and yeah for sure much more so in our generation like now like what we see is yeah. that people are just doing what they want to do nobody's exactly. like before we tried our parents used to try to fit us into this little box of like engineer doctor or yeah i don't know what banker or something it's and if you didn't do that ridiculous. yeah you're not you're not good you, enough you, yeah you're not good enough for a family how could you you know and uh, i don't they can do whatever they want uh, i just want to see them i just want to see them happy which I struggle. Those are I struggle with my my eldest on that. Yeah, your I was, son. Huh? I was so unhappy. I think I made him unhappy. He's such a Grinch. Yeah. He's like sees everything black. You know, every he brings up any the littlest problem from nothing. I'm just like, oh my god, did I really do this to you? So at one point, I, I used to bother me all the time, and I was just panicking about that. But now I'm just letting him, letting him. I'm I'm letting my positive energy and who I am and my daughter is very positive too and the youngest one as well and we're all the girl we have a girl power hopefully uh we'll rub off on him rub off on him and he does like sometimes he'll think about it and I, and I do talk to him about a lot of stuff like I'm always talking about being mindful and think about that and don't surrender to your thoughts like these are things that I was told as an adult but like I always tell him that like those you know do you actually believe that you know, are you going to actually believe what he's like? Well, it came up on my mind. I'm like, well, that doesn't mean it's true. It's real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't surrender to that thought. So maybe I, I, I'm treating him older than what he really is, but we'll see yeah. if it works. I mean, I don't know what else to do yet. I, but I agree with you. I think it's not, I think, I think we kind of have a very strong effect on our children. So our mood does, our, you know how we handle things so you seem to be handling things quite well and you're doing amazing things and that's amazing about that cooking show i'm so thank proud of you, you. So, we are the feet. so that's it sounds good thank you so much for being on the show thank i you love for seeing me. this is the first time it's like I, we got a catch-up session for the past five years that we haven't seen each other you're awesome thanks for reaching out and i want to come again yes definitely we'll have a part two after you launch the show Woo! yes <laughs> You can follow Rania on Instagram at rsitki. And of course, you can connect with me at Mommy's Happy Hour and Heba Shanbo. You can also visit my website, Mommy's Happy Hour, to see our previous episodes, write-ups, and other resources as well. See you again in two weeks.